Hi, my name is Nicholas and welcome in the second Motion Machine tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to see a little bit more how to dig into motion capture files and how to display motion capture contents in 3D and 2D scenes. So now you're familiar with these two folders, apps, where you actually store our own examples and your examples, and libs, where all the motion machine libraries actually sit. But actually in libs there is one more folder which is interesting here, and it's called generator. So generator actually contains a bunch of scripts for generating new projects in your different uh, operating systems. So here we're going to open a terminal window and we're going to reach this generator folder from where we actually downloaded motion machine. So it's libs generator. And we're going to actually launch the generator for OS 10 here. It asks the name for the project, so we're going to call it MM Basic Example. And what you see, it actually creates this folder in the sandbox folder. So a newly generated project is exactly like the MM Empty Example project. It's actually a clone of MM Empty Example. So when you're going to launch this, uh, use your own like Xcode or Visual Studio or Linux procedure for that, when you launch this project, you're going to find exactly the same source code and configuration as empty example. So here I'm going to switch to debug and hit the compile button. So you see what I get from this compilation is exactly the empty example. I'm going to give it a quick check, focus on 3D, drag it around, it works, perfect. And now uh, we can actually discover a little bit more uh, what is the entry point for Motion Machine because here actually I'm compiling something empty so there is nothing on, of my own code being compiled. So every Motion Machine project is going to come with this sort of set of features already included and this is this 3D scene that I'm actually dragging here which is at the back of the screen. But there is actually a 2D scene at the front that you don't see here because there is nothing displayed, but you can actually display some graphs at the front of the window. And there is a third layer uh, for annotation, so you can actually click and add some uh, markers. We're going to come back on this, of course, in further tutorials. So this is the entry point. So it looks like this in the code. So you have to navigate to your sources. And it looks exactly like an Open Frameworks project. So here you can see, if you're familiar with Open Frameworks, it looks exactly the same, just that we have replaced the basic class for Open Frameworks by our own, which is called scene app. There is another difference, is that you don't have actually a draw function like in Open Frameworks. The draw is split into three calls, one for the 3D scenes, one for the 2D scenes, and one for the annotation layer. The rest is the same as open frameworks, key press, key release, mouse drag, mouse press, etc. So the first thing we're going to do is actually load a motion capture file. So you're going to have to go in the CPP and we're going to have to start editing the setup function. So setup is what is launched once at the beginning of the application. And everything in motion machine works with what we call tracks, a little bit like a digital audio workstation or like a, a movie clip editing uh, uh, environment. So we have to add a new track and give it a name. This is the function add new track. And you see that you can give it an uh, argument. It's the name of the track. We're going to call this mocap. And from there, actually, everything that's going to be called track of mocap being the argument it's going to be our, our object to actually interact with that track. So what we want to do now is actually load a motion capture file into that track. And on my desktop here, I have three files. And one is actually called mocap.txt. So Motion Machine actually reads uh, a whole bunch of different file formats, including C3D, Visual 3D, BVH files, like all the very common uh, formats for motion capture and one it's called flat file so one is actually the motion capture data being just one line one frame so you just serialize completely motion capture data 
and you can read it in Motion Machine. So if you have like an exotic format, you can always come back to this flat file format and you're going to be able to use the data in Motion Machine. So the extension is text, so I'm going to go back on my code and I'm going to say load and here I have to put the string to this file. So because we don't want to always remember where is the project, where is the bin uh, folder, where is the uh, executable, everything, we have created this get app path which this function is going to bring you back exactly here. So it's going to bring you back exactly where the basic example um, executable is. So from there, if you want to get to your data folder, you're going to have to write plus slash data. So what I'm going to do here is going to, I'm going to drag the mocap file into this data folder so it's always in a secure place. There we go. And so here now my mocap.txt is just right at the executable path slash data slash mocap.txt, right? So if I do this, get app path plus slash data slash mocap.txt, I'm going to be able to load this motion capture file into motion machine. But nothing appears, of course, because here I've just loaded the file. So I've created a track and I loaded some data into the track. So what I would like to do now is to be able to play that file to display the 3D data. So to do this, I actually need to say into my 3D scene that I want to extract a frame from that file. So from now on, this track of mocap is my object. So I can actually ask for this anywhere in the code. And I'm going to ask for it in the 3D scene. So I'm going to say, can you give me the frame number 20 of this track? And I'm going to store this in another motion machine format, which is called frame. I'm going to say the frame here is equal to track of mocap. And Everywhere in Motion Machine, not only for the track, because we have a couple of types, we're going to describe them a bit later, but there, there is a very easy way to remember, is like everything that has to do with slicing a data type according to time, so being in second or in frame index, it's always the brackets, always. So if I want to ask the frame 20 of this track, I just say bracket 20 next to this syntax. And this is going to store the 20th frame into my frame variable. So I need to be more precise here. I guess this is the yeah ambiguous because actually the bracket can take either frame index or time in seconds, which is going to be float. So I need to specify this 20 to be an unsigned integer. So I need to give it a u after. So now I have the 20th frame here stored and I want to draw it. I want to actually display it on screen. So I'm going to use the draw function. And what you can see is that actually now I have, if I go back here and focus on the 3D scene, I have my skeleton. We can actually see arms and legs and the head. So we can actually see the content being displayed here. All right? So I propose to stop this tutorial here because now we can actually load 3D content from a file. And we're going to move to the third tutorial where we're going to see a little bit more how to connect the joints together animate this uh, skeleton over time and also display the 2D contents over the 2D scene which is at the front. So see you in the next tutorial and thanks for watching.